This is an MSNBC special presentation. On Tuesday, millions of Americans will decide our country's future. The Trump government, Trump himself, has really pissed a lot of people off. If you don't like it, go to Venezuela. Do you guys think that people in, uh, in Washington kind of understand what life's like out here? Oh, no, you kidding me? I'm on a mission to find those critical voters in the swing districts where they live. What do you guys care about the most? Very simple, Republicans. Republicans. To find out what matters most to the people whose votes could matter the most. And what matters to people here? Jobs. Help the economy grow. What matters to people on Peninsula Point? What matters to them is their portfolio. Money. What you're looking for is bliss. Always. That is, if they show up at all. Do you think most people that are your age care about politics? The millennial generation? No. Anybody here going to vote in the election on November 6th? Anybody? Nobody's going to vote? I'm Jacob Soboroff. And this is What Matters. The reality is the balance of power in Washington and Donald Trump's grip on it will be decided by the voters who live in key swing districts. These are the places and the people who will really decide America's future. I've spent the last few months visiting as many of them as I could, down the eastern seaboard through Maine, New York, and Florida, along the Texas border, and into the heart of Southern California. I met fishermen, farmers, immigrants, and oil workers. Join me for a journey to find out what matters most to the Americans whose votes will matter most on Election Day. To find out what matters, you got to start somewhere. So we picked the most northeasterly state of the mainland, Maine. Yep, it's a swing district, but the extraordinary coastline and picture-perfect towns and all of those lobsters didn't hurt either. This is Maine's second district, and it's massive the biggest congressional district east of the Mississippi, and the balance of power in Washington could be decided in places like this, somewhere between the U.S. border with Canada and all of that lobstering along the Atlantic. How you guys doing? You're on TV today. Can I come down there with you? Nice to meet you guys. This is my first time on a lobster boat. You guys are brother-sister team? Yes. Lobster woman, lobsterman. That's right. And uh, how long you guys been doing this? Our whole life. Lives. You're ho- how old are you guys? 17. And? I'm 23. 23 yeah. and 17. Yeah. And it's just a family business? That's right. right. Is there one party or candidate, like for Congress, for instance, that for you um, makes a difference or no? No. Day to day out here, what do people care about? What are people concerned about? They try and change the laws a lot. Uh-huh. How many traps we fish or like when we fish. It's funny. When you, when you say, talking about changing laws, I thought you were going to say, the laws that people talk about changing in Washington, like gay marriage, Uh, medical marijuana, all that stuff. But you're talking about when you can haul trash. Absolutely, yeah. That's when politics and, you know, that kind of affects us. Politics and and lobster fishing collide. Yeah. You guys know who uh, Paul Manafort is? I don't. You don't. Uh, How about Robert Mueller? Oh, that makes sense. You guys got other things you're thinking about. Yes. Not everyone here was born into lobstering. Some didn't have a choice. They just needed a paycheck. So you used to work in a paper mill? I did. What happened in the mill? Uh, it got shut down. I didn't want to see it happen. It's, you spend your whole life keeping something going, then they pull it out from under you. Doesn't make you feel very good. <laughs> how, how long were you working in the paper mill? 40 years. 40 years? Yeah. When did that end for you? December 17th, 2015. Do you remember the day? I remember that. Show me this over here. What's going on over here? This is a buy-in station to buy lobsters. You can come on. Okay, can we bring the camera up? Talk to you guys. Come on up, guys. My name's Drake. Jacob. How you doing? Nice to meet you. This area, they got a congressional election coming up in November. That's a pretty tight congressional election. Yes. You guys following that at all, or no? I'm not going to discuss politics with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that crazy. <laughs> but I'm not asking you what you who you want to vote for or anything like that. Do you care about it? Oh, of course. You do. Yeah, it affects my livelihood. Why mm-hmm. wouldn't I? I'd be foolish not to care. Uh huh. You gonna you gonna vote in it? Yeah, I may. You normally vote or no? No, not normally. Why not? 
I really don't think that our opinions matter. Do you guys think that people in, uh, in Washington kind of understand what life's like out here? Oh, no, are you kidding me? Now. For somebody to win a vote of a, of a guy like you or you guys, what do, they need to, what do they need to do or say? Understand the business. This business. Yeah, and want to help. I don't know, it's just crazy. Like, here's just an example. Yeah. The boat price is like somewhere around, what, three bucks, roughly? Right around three dollars to the guy catching it, the guy risking his life. What does that mean, the boat price? The boat price, what that guy, what, what the fisherman's the getting paid per pound of lobster. Three bucks $3. per pound. Yeah. And then if you go to Walmart or wherever, it's like, what, 12, 15 bucks a pound? For lobster. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. That's not right. Money in your pocket, that is what matters most down here. I headed inland to the city of Bangor, one of the district's biggest, to get a bite and a drink. You have a Maine tattoo? I do. This is Maine. This is the state of Maine. So what do you do here? I'm a host. What's going to get you out to vote? Raising um, minimum wage. Raising minimum wage. Actually, the community matters most to us. Really, children can play in the streets. Everyone has a good time. Everyone knows your name here. What were you talking about? <laughs> Things that don't actually like matter. Like what? What were you talking about? <laughs> Boys and girls and dating. That's important, that matters. <laughs> Our mornings in Bangor started with a cup of coffee right here, where the struggles to keep life so simple became clear. Hey, you live here? Come on over. What's up, man? Here, take a seat. Okay. This is gonna be on TV? Yeah, probably, I'm Jacob. All right. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. So, what kind of law do you practice? Criminal defense. Criminal defense. There are a lot of drugs in this area, so we deal with drug problems all the time. So you got a lot of opioids? Yeah. Fentanyl? That is prevalent around here. So when you say what matters to people in the district, you know, what are the kind of things you'll end up voting on? Well, the news that I follow most closely is really the national scene. Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. What do you think about him? It's hard to put into words, really. So. You remember a Congress's name what again? Bruce Poliquin. Bruce Poliquin. He's a Republican. Right. Would your, the way you feel about Trump affect the way you vote for Poliquin in November? Yes, it would. You think so? Mm -hmm. You were saying you're a criminal defense attorney and you deal a lot in drug cases here in Bangor. Yes. Is that what people are going to vote on in this district? I think that everyone is very concerned about it. It affects very many people. Will it be the deciding issue? I doubt it. What do you think will decide? Propaganda. That's dark. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's how I feel. That criminal defense attorney told us that the opioid crisis, fentanyl, is a big issue here. There's a clinic here where they're literally trying to stop people from dying uh, today. Are people going to vote on that? Uh, we're hoping they are. Uh, and Maine certainly has been hit really hard um, by deindustrialization. So with the collapse of the mill economies, people are trying to escape. They're trying to escape from the, the stress and the, of their everyday lives. And, and uh, you know, drugs is an easy way to do that. So in a way, what that guy said to me out on the porch outside of the coffee shop, that uh, when he t mentioned fentanyl use, it's not just about fentanyl use. It's about the economy here. It's about... Um, the struggles that everybody's going through on a daily basis. Yeah. Those struggles, the fight to stay afloat in Maine second, is in part hidden behind the state's beauty. Once you leave Bangor, it's nothing but trees. Obviously, the backbone of what used to be a massive timber industry. And it's no surprise that when that industry collapsed, a lot of people were hit very hard. Uh, we hear Millinocket as a place where there used to be a thriving paper mill. So we're heading there. We drove here to uh, this place, which is the Great Northern Paper Mill, or at least it used to be. And when we were checking it out, we were just looking down here, and it's, this is Mike, uh, who's out here uh, fishing, I guess, right, Mike? Yeah, doing a little smallmouth fishing. How many people do you think lost their jobs when this place closed? Oh, it's in the thousands. In the thousands? Yeah. This is downtown Millinocket. Uh, the district's former congressman is Mike Michaud, who gave up the seat in a losing run for governor, and he showed me around town. Millinocket uh, and three towns were uh, at one point in time, one of the wealthiest regions of, in the state because of the mill. When you say this was one of the most affluent areas in the whole state of Maine, are you talking about, I mean, even these neighborhoods right here? Well, uh, absolutely. Uh, th these, th this was a booming town. And homes up here uh, that could uh, normally would sell for uh, sixty, seventy, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 are going for, you know, ten, twelve, thirteen thousand. dollars $13,000. Like homes like these? Yes. Wow. Whether you look at all this and think America needs to be made great again, or just changed, adapted to the times, there's no strong Trump economy right here. That's just a fact. Close by, a friend of Mike's opened the door to a 700-foot-long abandoned paper mill for us. It closed because of competition from Canada and China, 
And when it did, the town was never the same again. They were able to actually sell that paper here in the United States for $50 a ton cheaper than what it could be produced here. When I was in high school, I know that the mills in these two communities employed 4,000 people. 4,000 people? 4,000. To today? These jobs are gone now. I mean, what matters to people here? Jobs. People would love to come back here and live here, but they got to be able to support themselves. Coming up, campaigning in the only Republican-held congressional district in New York City. All right. Hi, I'm Jacob. <laughs> Wait, real quick, real quick. Okay, bye. She'll be the register. I'm on my way south to try to figure out what matters to the people who will matter most in the midterms, and it is safe to say I did not think our journey would include a stop in New York City. But hidden in that big blue apple spy burrows is a red slice, represented by a Republican in Congress, and it turns out it's not Trump's birthplace, Queens. Nor is it his adoptive home in Manhattan. Out there, they call it The Rock, Staten Island. When you get here, it feels nothing like the rest of the city. It is the only majority white borough in New York, and race is central to politics here. Since it is New York, we went for pizza at Danino's. Meatball, onion, ricotta. So good. What kind of jobs most people have? I have construction people in the back. Will you introduce me to them? Sure. Let's go. What kind of pizza did you get? Uh, garbage pie today. Garbage pie? Yep. What are the things that you get the sense of matter most to people that are living out here? Jobs. Just, yeah. Jobs. Jobs? Yep. They care about business, uh -huh. jobs, taxes, and a voice within the five boroughs. What do you mean? Because Sad Island's different from the rest of the five boroughs? Yep. This is the only borough that, that will put a Republican in Congress. How's the calamari? It looks really good. You guys Republicans or Democrats? Republicans. All our friends, everybody we know is Republicans. But this is New York City. Why is everybody so fervently Republican on Staten Island? They're trying to turn this into Los Angeles, to California. Hey, watch it. I'm from Los Angeles. <laughs> Shame on you. We're Trump. The way we want, We're yeah. We're Trump. We don't want anybody yeah. going against them, and it's I a shame Trump. what they do. People are going to watch us and say, you're in New York City and you're walking around people saying, I love Trump? <laughs> yes, yes. I would have worn my Trump shirt if I knew you were You got one at home? <laughs> oh, yeah. The wall between Danino's and the kitchen isn't the one Trump wants, but it represents a familiar divide between people likely to vote and those who don't. That's amazing. So what's the secret? Well, like I say, I can't tell you because it's a secret. It's a secret, but... all right. One of the things that it sounded like to me talking to people in Danino's is more people like Trump and the Republicans than don't like Trump. Is that true? I think so, you know, but... What about in your community, Mexican community? Few people, maybe less people like Trump. You less, know? I think that that's fair to say. You're, you're a citizen, you're not a citizen. No, not yet. You vote? Uh, not yet, but I got it. You haven't done it yet. Yeah. Republican Congressman Dan Donovan's counting on his voters turning out. And he asked us to meet him at a local supermarket where he figured we'd run into some of them. Why'd you want to meet at ShopRite? Well, this is where you find out what was really on people's minds when they're shopping. You know, this is a reflection of the economy. This is a reflection of jobs. And they will tell you what they're thinking. They're not shy, the people in the district. I, I, you. Your congressman brought me to ShopRite because he said, this is where you, you go nice to, see you. to find out what matters to people here. And what will be the things that are on your mind the most? Supporting my president. Supporting oh, yeah. your president. Same thing. I love Donald Trump. He's great. A lot of Democrats out here feel the same way you do. Especially after the Kavanaugh thing. So many women that work here were outraged by that. Really? Yes. The way he was treated. Just the, just the treatment. What can the congressman do for you? Help the traffic. Why traffic first? Because it impacts me more right now. It impacts you every day. Mm -hmm. Are you a Republican or Democrat? No, that's a hell of a question. Uh, a lot of Democrats out here end up voting for the Republican. Yes. Could you see yourself voting for a Republican? I have to think about it. My wife, she doesn't vote at all. She says it doesn't matter. Your wife says it doesn't, oh, it doesn't matter. matter. Absolutely. What does it say there? Stand for the flag, flag kneel for the cross. Kneel for the cross, absolutely. And if you don't like it, go to Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> the truth, it's, get out of what's here. What's your name? I'm sorry? What's your name? Jenny. Jenny, I'm Jacob. Oh, hi, Jacob. It's My real name is Giovannina. Giovannina? Oh, you said it right. I got an Italian wife. 
Oh, fuck <laughs> you. And I'm kidding. Fuck <laughs> you. She tells him that every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Max Rose. Democratic challenger Max Rose thinks winning the Staten Islanders who spend their days off the island will be critical. How you doing, man? Max Rose, keep me in mind. Oh, no. All right. Thanks, stuff. Thanks, bud. Thank keep you. me in mind. He hugged you. How many people do you actually know versus know you? I know everybody. I don't just hug random people. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be weird. Uh, I do. That, that, you do? That, that's, your, that's your shtick? Yeah. So 7.45 is the next ferry, 7.45 right? 7.45 is the next ferry. Once okay, it hits so 7.44, we're just wishing them good luck. Uh, yeah. All right. All right, good. You recognize them? Yes. What matters to you that you thought Max is the candidate for you? Traffic issues, like, like the North Shore needs a rapid transit. Are you interested in voting for him because he's a Democrat or because he's saying something different? Say something different. Like, I don't really believe, like, the whole Democrat-Republican thing. I feel neither one of them is good for us. Really? In my personal opinion. Uh-huh. All they see about politics right now is that it's a joke. It's Democrats trying to kill Republicans, Republicans trying to kill Democrats, and no disrespect to, to your broadcast No, it's all station, good. I, it happens MSNBC every day. MSNBC and Fox News just watching it like this is a UFC fight. We've got to turn the page on this era of politics. What matters to you out here on Staten Island? What matters is the traffic, the congestion. Are you a Republican or Democrat? Or? I am a Republican. And, and you think you might vote for a Democrat? I might if he does the right thing. But Gets that every, truck every four years, I get disappointed. You think that he's got a shot at changing things around out here? Yeah, I hope so. All right, get on your ferry. Go, 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 go. He's going to make it. There he is. He's getting on. Hey. He made it through. I would have felt really bad about that. Turnout is always critical and usually low in these midterm races, which is why what really matters, particularly here, is voter registration, especially in non-white communities. And we found one registration drive across New York Harbor in a tiny corner at the 11th, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Hey, what's up, guys? Future voters. So they're too young for you to register. Oh, of course. <laughs> you have to be uh, 18 years old. So that's what you're doing out here? Yes, trying to get more Chinese uh, residents to vote. So is it hard to stop people on the street to try to get them to register? Yes. Hi, I'm Jacob. Wait, real quick, real quick. What's your name? What's your name? OK, bye. She already registered. She registered already. Wait, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> His job, their job, is a lot like my job, chasing random people on the street and trying to get them to talk to you. He has to go a step further and actually register people to vote. Yes. There's a bunch of uh, Chinese people over Let's there. go. Let's go. OK, are you going to register to vote? He said, what is that? What about in your life? What is important to you? What are the problems that you face? <laughs> so he said when he wants to purchase anything, he doesn't have money to... It's too expensive. Too expensive, and he wants them to, you know, help him. So if, if you care about that, and you want things to be less expensive, or you want to have more money, or you want to have a better quality of life, why don't you vote? He said he wants to register now. You're going to register. <laughs> so this is going good. Yeah, yeah this is good. After the break, we head out in the southeasternmost congressional district in the United States. And is that how most Republicans talk around here? Those that are connected to the sea. Yeah, absolutely. Look, this isn't about red or blue. This is about water. We're still heading south to find out what matters in a place that always seems to matter in American elections, Florida. All the way south is Florida's 26th congressional district, the southernmost in the continental U.S., and residents from these Miami suburbs all the way down to where you can almost see Cuba could hold the key to who controls Congress. But you don't have to go that far for a good Cuban coffee. These uh, Cuban coffee counters are a big deal in Miami if you want to find out what the mood is, what people are thinking, what's on their minds. This is where you come. What do you get? Just uh, Cuban coffee, no sugar. So really, it's espresso, but we call it That's Cuban coffee. That's what I'm gonna do that. Hey. Ah, gracias, gracias. She says it's time to vote for me. So That's what she said. That's a good sign. <laughs> You could be translating and I would have no idea. You might say, you're going to have a really Terrible. tough election, man. Carlos Carbello is the Good. incumbent Republican congressman here in a tight race, where Cuban Americans are key to Republicans' grip on power. Let's go talk to some folks. Is that all right? 
before you get have to get out of here? Sure. What are you voting on? What do you? I'm not. It's not quiz, but like, what do you guys care about the most? Very simple. Republicans. 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 Do you get the sense that the rest of the people in Washington understand what life is like here? I don't think so. I'm a pro believer that we should allow a lot of immigrants to come in because I'm a immigrant, but do it the right way, legally, like I have to do it. So when you saw them separating those kids, what'd you think? It has to be done. I think a lot of people would think this is a heavily immigrant district, but just because it's a district full of immigrants doesn't mean you're gonna hate that policy. No, exactly, you know, it, it, it's not that I like it, because it shouldn't, you know, you separating family, and it gotta hurt if you're a family man like me. I don't know what I would do if they separate me from my kids, but as a parent, I will have never put my kids in that position. Most people uh, here Republicans or Democrats? Here? Majority in this sector is Republican. What are you guys? I sit independently. I sit so do separate. I. I do too. I mean, she's my mother and she, <laughs> she came to this country. And so when you watch what's happening with immigration now, playing out, like they brought some of those separated kids here. What do you think about that? I couldn't bear the, the thought of being separated from my kids. I mean, look at me. I'm with him today. <laughs> and he's an adult. Cuba's not the only island that influences the food in the 26th district or its politics. 22 years from where? Uh, from Haiti. From Haiti. And my wife from Jamaica. Your wife's from Jamaica? Yes. And this is your place? That's our place. Come on over. Hi. So he's Asian, you're Jamaican. Right. This, is, this place is your baby. Well, yes. that's your real baby, but this place is your other baby. Yes, it is. What's life like in Homestead? It's growing and it's getting more expensive. The price of bread went up. The price of bread went up? Yeah, it sure has. When did you notice that? Today. When you were at the supermarket? <laughs> yes, today. What do you want from your political leaders? I would like the leaders to help the economy grow, for people to have more money in their pockets. <laughs> no matter which way you look down here, there's one thing that ties what we keep hearing, the economy, standard of living, and prosperity together. And that is this state's most precious resource, the water. What's the kind of stuff that concerns you guys day to day in your life? What matters to you guys? I think it's conservation is really important. You know, we're in the water all the time and just taking care of our underwater resources is very important for us. Do you guys vote here? Yes. It's pretty important. The country's going in a, an interesting direction. For you, it's, it's what happens in the water. For you, it's what happens in Washington, D.C. Um, I think what happens in Washington, D.C. is what's going to happen in the water. Yeah, it's, it's a very national thing. Conservation issues are front and center here because so many jobs depend on the tourist economy. You're out here almost every day. I'm almost on the water more often than I am on land. It's not just taking people out and catching fish for me. It's, a, it's about being a steward of the sea, um, showing them uh, egrets and manatee and stingray. Uh, I tell people you're selling yourself short if you're going out on a fishing trip hoping that you're just going to catch a bunch of fish. That's sort of the, the icing on the cake. Well, I wanted to show you an example of an area that has some uh, clean water, beautiful seagrass. Like you can see that shark in the water right there. See that little nurse shark? Oh yeah, there's a shark. Not far away is Steve's worst nightmare where 40,000 acres of seagrass died off. Something he tells us is directly tied to man-made causes. I'd say that this is off-colored, um, kind of uh, muddy water, not really green, but just muddied up, dirty water. Is your way of life here as you know it over, or is this something that can be solved? It's reversible. We have to elect the right people that have the political will to help the environment. You guys both sound like uh, bleeding heart liberals, are you? Uh, I'm not. I'm a, a moderate, at best, uh, Republican. Republican? Yes. And is that how most Republicans talk around here? Uh, it, those that are connected to the sea. Yeah, absolutely. Look, this isn't about red or blue. This is about water. One thing about this district is that it is not very high above sea level. This is uh, Big Pine Key, and this neighborhood is called the Avenues. And uh, it's been a year since Hurricane Irma, but they're really not back on their feet here by any stretch of the imagination. The entire neighborhood uh, is for the most part, still obliterated. At the end of this road and this district, there's no turn, only more water. We have driven about 155 miles 
uh, from the very top of the 26th Congressional District all the way to the very southern tip. Uh, it's also the southernmost tip of the continental United States, Key West, Florida. You're good. With the congressional election coming up, what do you think the things that people in Key West are going to be voting on? The biggest one will probably be the environment. What about the stuff that we hear about on TV all the time? Trump, Russia investigation, scandals? Those are sometimes distractors. I mean, I think they're important, but I like to stay focused on who's supporting what I'm supporting. So what do you care about most? Um, water quality. And a polluted Key West means what? Means less tourism, less, you know, bliss when you're in the water. And what you're looking for is bliss. Yes, always. <laughs> When we come back, we're going to the congressional district that has a third of the entire U.S.-Mexico border. We're on the Mexico side of the border wall, but still in the U.S. It's no man's land. If you can hit the ball far enough, it goes into Mexico. Let it rip, Frank. Not quite to Mexico, but not bad. headed west, back to where I spent months this year, along the border. And voters in the district with the most of it in the country could be the ones who decide who controls the House on Election Day. This is Texas, where even the congressional districts are bigger. The 23rd stretches from suburban San Antonio to the outskirts of El Paso, so far away it's in a different time zone. And with separations and caravans and walls literally on the horizon here, the 70% of voters in the district who are Latino have an opportunity to decide what matters most. This is a cucumber. It's covered in chili. It's delicious. Uh, this is a flea market on the south side of San Antonio. And we came here with Gina Ortiz Jones, who's running for Congress, to find out what matters to people here. Why did you want to meet me here? Well, look, we're on the south side, right? This is a, one of the fastest growing parts of, of San Antonio. This is a part of the community that has traditionally been underserved, uh, underrepresented. When you say underserved and underrepresented, that might also mean people that may not traditionally vote? That's true, that's true. What do people want around here? Well, look, look, it's everything, right? It's everything from a bike. Uh, we just passed uh, some delicious churros. Yep, churros. Uh, everything, I mean, um, clothing, backpacks. Look at these boots. I know, these are nice. My wife asked me to buy my sun boots. I'm like, oh, these are awesome. Hey, how's it going? Hi there. Hi. Gina. What matters most to you? Other than child-sized cowboy boots. Uh, my community. Yeah. You know? Do you normally go out and vote in elections? When I'm able to. So no, not I, always. I, yeah, not always. Not always. That's a thing around yeah. here. I heard not not very many people vote. Well, it's just business and kids. You know, well. it gets it gets pretty hectic. So what will be the thing that gets you fired up enough to go vote? To help make a difference. Um, especially for the people in the lower income bracket and so forth and, and our people, you know. And, um, when you say our people? Hispanics. And that's this district is largely Latino. 70% Hispanics. Everyone here talks about community. It's about community. It's about how we take care of one another, how we look after one another, and how we invest in the future. We are on our way from one of the most populated parts of this district, that little corner of it by San Antonio where 70% of the voters live, to one of the most remote parts, Crystal City, and that's where we're going to meet the district's congressman. His name is Will Hurd. How are you? Nice to see you. The 23rd District of Texas is larger than 26 states, roughly the size of the state of Georgia. He's doing 38 stops, 32 different town halls, 14 of which are Dairy Queens. Do you have a preferred Dairy Queen order by, by um, any chance? When, when uh, on my own, it's a, it's a, it's a medium dip cone. Yeah, me too. Um, but I'm a purist. That's authentic. Yeah, 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 come on, on, you gotta come join us. You gotta come join us. Come on, yeah, That's please, please, yeah. yeah. Look, everybody always thinks that I'm gonna lose in this district. Everybody was shocked that a black dude represents a Latino district, right? But the reason is because I try to talk about the things that people care about down here. Mm -hmm. That's why I come in here and talk to people. We're one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. Mm -hmm. I think you know that. Yep. My concern is the streets. There's a lot of potholes everywhere. Potholes. Major problem is school education for our kids. Why did nobody as the first issue bring up what's going on with the Supreme Court this week? Or nobody brought up Russia? I, I think that the issues that are being brought up are not only important issues, but they affect us immediately here. These are the things that we know are going to make a difference tomorrow. What? Most elected officials and what the media try to coverage are not the same conversations you have down here locally. Nobody brought up the border either, even though residents along hundreds of miles of this district are literally living side by side with Mexico. To find out why, we're heading to a spot on the border that I'd never been before, Eagle Pass. We're on the Mexico side of the border wall, but still in the U.S. It's no man's land. We just met Frank, 
who works construction, but has time off and he's out here playing golf down on the border. And that's Mexico right there. That's the Rio Grande, just on the other side. If you can hit the ball far enough, it goes into Mexico. Let her rip, Frank. Not quite to Mexico, but not bad. Yeah. So what are some of the big challenges of being a small business guy? Things right now are a little slow. You know, I got people I got to pay. I got material I got to pay. So you guys need a strong economy in order for your business to be doing well. To be thriving, yeah, exactly. This is the Rio Grande right here? Yeah, it's a Rio Grande right there. And so, Frank, when you're out here golfing, are you thinking about, you know, all the politics people talk about with the border? No. What do you think about? Let's go to work. And then what time is tea time? Go golf. You know, I visit a lot of places along the border, but I have never been to a place uh, like this. Look at these houses that are actually so close. In fact, they live on uh, the border wall. This is the border wall with Mexico right here. I met these guys whose backyard literally is the wall, but their front line is an entirely different one. So when you vote, it's not about the border, it's about? Jobs. Years. Jobs. Jobs. <laughs> There's a whole lot of people that come out of school, can't get a job here, they gotta move out. Are your kids still on Eagle Pass? No. We went less than a mile to downtown Eagle Pass where even those who are staying know that life outside might offer more. Hi. Hi. I'm Jacob. Nadia. Can I come in? Sure. Really? With these guys? Of course. No way. Come in. Well, what do you care about when you wake up in the morning? What matters to you? To me? It's like my dogs. Your dogs. <laughs> what else? Secure jobs. People leave from town to go work. So people that are from here leave Eagle Pass? Yes. How come? And better mm. jobs. Better paying. Yeah. If you work here, it's like maybe, you know, you get a job at uh, HEB, Walmart, or whatever. But you go out and there's the oil fields, the oil rigs, and all that stuff. Oil That's fields where, and oil rigs. Yeah. Oil. You don't have to go far in the small town of Dilly to find out that that's what matters to people here. In fact, all you have to do is stop for gas. What's on people's minds? Eagle Ford Shell. When you say Eagle Ford Shell, you're talking about one of the most productive oil regions right. in the whole world. Right, what we're standing on, basically. Right now, on top of this gas that's station. Right. Yes, sir. So what do you do? Uh, I'm in the fracking industry. Yeah, obviously, but I mean, yeah. what, do you, what, what kind of stuff do you do? We frack. Exactly. We, you know, we work on so the So you work in production? Yes, sir. Tell me about what it's like to work in this business. You know, as of right now, it's booming, so I might as well take advantage of it and save as much as possible. But it was pretty slow here a couple years ago, right? Yeah, about two, three years ago, it was pretty slow. Did you ever have to leave to go find work? Uh, yeah, I had went to work for IBC Bank. IBC Bank? Yeah, I was a marketing director. So you were working in marketing, mm -hmm. and now you're working in oil field production. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So what job paid better? <laughs> oil field, of course. Better than working in marketing at a big global bank? Yeah. Do you think most people that are your age care about politics? Not really. The millennial generation, no. And you vote. Yeah, I do it, you know, here and there, but. Not, not every time. Yeah. This summer, my colleagues and I broke the story of the Trump administration's plan to open a tent city in the Texas desert, all because of the overflow of migrant kids its separation policy caused. It's in the 23rd, and on this trip, I went there for my first time. Out this way, is the Tornillo tent camp. It's the uh, facility for the separated kids that the Trump administration set up. And it's almost as many people as the population of the nearby town of Tornillo. Living side by side with it, the obvious question is whether it is what matters most to the residents here. And frankly, that wasn't so easy to find out. I stood around looking for someone, anybody, until this guy showed up. What does it say? It says, uh... Pomegranate. Pomegranates? Yeah, my usher is one block right there. Can we go see it? Yes, sir. Just met Marcelino, who's currently driving us backwards down his street to his pomegranate orchard. He said it's got 800 trees. It's the first pomegranate orchard in all of El Paso County. Oh, look, here it is. When you go and vote, what do you care about? The main thing is about the, the production of food for us. Don't forget one thing. I'm a... Uh, farmer. So what you're saying is when you go to vote, the first thing you're thinking about is all this. Yes, sir. I thought you were going to say the tents over there with all the kids in them. You know, that's number one because it's in your face. Well, we need to feed in that kids too. We need to produce food. Basically, the most important thing you want to hear from your politicians in Washington is about this. Right? That's right. 
help the farmers. Next, our journey ends in my home state, California, where the orange curtain might fall. Is anybody going to vote in the congressional election in November? What do people care about around here? After crisscrossing the country for months, on a quest to find out what matters most to the Americans who could tear down Donald Trump's hold on Washington, I didn't mind that our last stop was my home state. Just south of my house in Los Angeles, the Republicans hold four contiguous seats in Orange County. Hillary Clinton won them, and the Democrats want them to tip the balance of power in Washington. It used to be that when you're going from LA to Orange County, you cross through what I guess political pundits would call the orange curtain because you'd go from a very Democratic area into a very Republican area. Uh, but this year, back in Washington, the Democrats are hoping that's changing. So you all live in Orange County? Yes. Uh -huh. If you watch the news, all you hear about is Brett Kavanaugh, right? The guy yes, who's... that's right. What are the things you'd rather be thinking about? Traffic and pollution. Traffic and pollution. We hopped off the train in the city of Irvine in the 45th district to link up with the rest of our team. And like good Californians, carpool. The Democrats' first strategy for winning here hinges on turning out people of color and young voters. So we headed to the local University of California campus. This is In-N-Out Burger, legendary California institution. If you want to know what Californians think, this is where you have to come. What do people care about in Irvine? Myself and a lot of my friends are like minorities, so we're all, a lot into like minority rights and stuff. Are there enough of you guys to actually flip the district? Uh, I hope so. He's motivated, but Democrats need him to be the rule, not the exception. Up the street, we noticed a group of students, so we started walking. Bus stop at UC Irvine. There are, I think, 26,000 kids that go to school here. And uh, if the Democrats can get all of them to vote for them, then maybe Republicans will be in trouble in this district. But I don't know. Sorry, not to be annoying, but we're with NBC News, and I'm just trying to figure out, is anybody here going to vote in the election on November 6th? Anybody? Anybody? Nobody's going to vote? Is anybody going to vote in the congressional election in November? You are. Thank you, sir. Yeah. What do you care about? <laughs> what do I care about? Yeah. Um, school. School. <laughs> cool. What about you? I'll walk with you to the bus stop. You guys get on this bus? Yeah. So if you were going to vote, what, what is the thing that's going to get your vote? Probably school. That makes sense. <laughs> I was going to say, you're not talking about the issues that People talk about it on the news all the time. The Russia investigation, the Supreme Court. News. You don't watch that stuff. I don't watch the news. <laughs> Are you registered to vote? Uh, not yet. Not yet. How old are you? 18. 18. So this could be your first election? Yeah. And ultimately, you could decide whether or not the House of Representatives is in Democratic or Republican control. Are you thinking about all that? Um, not currently. Maybe if I took more time to like get informed about like what's going on right now in politics. I assume that the people voting have at least some idea of who they're voting for. What do you think about him saying he's going to let other people decide? So that means he's going to let you vote. It's okay. I, I got higher grades than him in school. You got higher grades than him. <laughs> Are you going to vote? I should. We're like the most unreliable voter demographic, mm -hmm. so I should vote to like increase those numbers, you know? Well, that's what the Democrats want. <laughs> but they can't get on you guys necessarily. No. No. Slowly, if you keep asking us these questions, the, the rest of the people our age are going to keep doing it. They're like, oh man. Better vote. All the old people are telling us to vote now. Oh, am I old? No. <laughs> Older, sorry. Dude. <laughs> Strategy two for flipping this critical district, capitalize on dislike of the president. But that assumes college-educated Republicans actually dislike the president. In the 48th district, we took our shoes off to find out. As we've gone across the country, people continue to say to me, they're struggling economically, but we made it here to the Pacific Ocean, Newport Beach, California. And by the looks of these houses, it doesn't seem to be the problem here. Jacob. Paul. Paul, nice to meet you. You as well. So what are you doing out here? I'm just enjoying the day. You know, back in Washington, Democrats are targeting this district as one that could swing from Republican to Democrat. Are you surprised that this is a, a swing district? No, I'm not. I think the current government, um, the Trump government, Trump himself, has really pissed a lot of people off. Not everybody, evidently. We met this guy on the other side of all those fancy beach houses. Now, what matters to people on Peninsula Point? What matters to them is their portfolio. What does that mean? Money. Are they voting on 
the kind of stuff that, you know, we talk about on the news or the stuff you hear about in Washington, like the Supreme Court confirmation process. It's all of that. But but that, again, speaks to President Trump. And most people here are satisfied with the job he's doing. We just got on the car ferry here to drive across from, uh, what's the name of that place we just drove across from? That's Balboa Peninsula. So we, we're just driving across from Balboa Peninsula to where? Balboa Island. Balboa Island. What do people care about around here? This, this. right here. This is it? We're here? Uh, it's yeah. the shortest ferry ride I've ever been on. Would you guys be willing to do an interview? Sure. Okay. Oh, amazing. You think the Democrats have a chance to flip this place? You're already laughing. <laughs> How does it feel to live in one of the most contested swing congressional districts in the country? I'm loving it. Do you? <laughs> I'm on the wrong side, though. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm not on the L.A. side. Let's put it that way. So you're a Republican. I am. What about the stuff that we hear about, you know, back in Washington, the Supreme Court nomination? and? Um... Well, I think we probably are a little more open minded about that than, you know, I don't believe everything I no offense, but I don't believe everything I see in the media and read. And what are you guys doing here? We're getting hippo cookies. <laughs> getting hippo cookies. Oh, amazing. Does it occur to you that you're in a really important swing congressional district? Is it something that you think about? It is not something I think about. I do think about that I'm in a very conservative area and I don't happen to be very conservative. When you wake up in the morning, what are the issues that matter most to you? Well, when I wake up in the morning, they're yelling at me. So uh, quite honestly, I don't watch much TV. I think about the Me Too campaign. I have a daughter. I think about, oh God, is Kavanaugh going to be appointed? That really worries me. Things like that. I mean, that's probably taking up most of my brain space, and the so small brain space I have available. In 2014, the last midterm election, less than a third of eligible voters in Orange County actually showed up. But now that these districts actually might be flippable, the thinking here is that might be different. We made our way to Westminster, home to Little Saigon, and uh, a lot of people say, having grown up in Southern California, there are no real community gathering places uh, around here. But I will tell you where people gather, and it is at the car wash. Wow. Let me see if any of these guys will chat. I'm here because there's a big election coming up in uh, November for Congress. Are you guys thinking about voting? No. What's life like in uh, in Westminster, Huntington Beach? Terrific. Terrific. We live in California. Nice out here, huh? Yeah. A lot of people say this is a conservative area, and the Democrats are going to try to flip it. Well, good luck. What are the issues that are going to be most important to you that you're going to vote on? Um, I think just a lot of the racial issues that's going on. So that's a big thing, especially now with Trump and. Are you a voter? Do you vote here? Not yet. So you're not a citizen yet? Um, working on it. Working on it? Yes. Are you planning on voting? Uh, no. You're not? No. Not at all? Not at all. You're laughing. <laughs> so you weren't even I've, I've actually it. never voted, so... In your life? Yeah. How come? It's not my thing. If I just voted, you know, like, it would just, just be like a scantron, you know, just A, a B, C, D, you know. You like, just fill in the bubbles. I, exactly. That's what I did on tests in high school. Yeah, I would care if I knew more about it, but I just don't have the time. What do you do? Real estate. Real estate? Yeah. Has anybody ever said to you, there's so much on the line, the Supreme Court, all kinds of things? If you don't know anything, how, how are you supposed to know? You go do research, I just don't have the time for that, so. Does Washington, D.C. and what happens there feel relevant to your life here? No, not in my world. Honestly, it was hard to keep up with what unfolded back at headquarters and in Washington as I traveled the thousands of miles across the country to understand what matters most to Americans. I believe, we believe. And while the anger and passion stirred this fall have mobilized angry and passionate partisans, what matters most to the voters I met wasn't what we normally hear about on TV. I heard about jobs, money, drug addiction, climate change, pollution, oil, traffic, even potholes. Americans told me they feel alienated. They told me they want to be heard. And on November 6th, we'll really find out what matters most. I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.